find the love, find the devotion, use the heart. Use the mind to concentrate, use it to gain insight. When we have done all of that stuff, some people in America, there's this word called Shakti Pata. It means bestowing of Shakti. We know it as grace. One may say it's grace of Allah. Another says it's grace of Yahweh. Another says it's grace of Jesus. Shakti is that fine energy. It's a word for that finest of energy. Pada means something like to bestow, to give. It's a gift. It's common now in America that people do seminars and workshops. Give me your money. Come to my thing and I will give you Shakti Pada. Come to a weekend seminar, you'll walk away with Shaktipada. Shaktipada is not the beginning of the journey, it's the end. And more often than not, this grace that we're talking about is given in very small doses along the way. Now, I'm not saying people shouldn't go to seminars. Please, I'm trying to say this in a context. I'm not saying people shouldn't, that, that there's nothing to what's going on in programs that are doing. There is. But it's a, it's a tiny little piece of the thing along the way. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's a very good thing. But the thing I'm wanting to talk about here and what Shaktipat ultimately is about, it's the thing that removes the final barrier. It comes in little pieces along the way. But when you finally get to the point, and I don't care what language you use, where you have worked with your mind, you've trained it to be focused, You've done the contemplation so that when the experience happens, you understand the context in which it happens. You take a practice like we did this morning and you come to see, I know exactly what we did. It wasn't just that it was that meditation. It was a systematic process itself. And now when I see lights or have visions or, or, or prophetic dreams or something, it's making sense to me because I under, understand the context. I get the whole big picture. And your heart is singing and longing. And finally you get so utterly frustrated that there's nothing left you can do. And then the mind, the persona, the personality structure of who we think we are gets so exasperated that it can do nothing other than scream. There's so many different stories. You know, the, the, the teacher and the student walking down the pathway in the Himalayas or some such thing or wherever it happens to be and says, whichever one of you disciples will jump off the cliff, I will give you Shaktipat and show you Atman or Truth or God or Divine. And so everybody stays except one who jumps and gets enlightened. I start hearing those stories. You know what it did to me? It pissed me off. And it pissed me off for this reason. As personality, I'm a coward. I said, if God, grace, guru, somebody told me to jump off that cliff, I know that I won't jump. I'm a coward. I'll cling to the nearest tree branch to keep from going off. The reason it angered me was, that doesn't mean I don't want this. It just means I'm a coward. I understand that coward is not who I am at some theoretical level. My own teacher said when finally the final barrier was broken for him, it was after his teacher had told him it will take you 14 years and it was 17 years. And he said, obviously, one of two things. Either you don't have the ability to guide me or you have chosen not to. I'm going to drown myself in the Ganges. Reason, not just to commit suicide, but my will is so strong, my desire is so strong, my karmas have brought me to a place where I'm not getting there. But if I drop this body, my unconscious desire is so strong that it will lead me to a true teacher, somebody who will show me. So I'm going to go jump in the river. And he says then, the master told him, well, you be sure and take a big boulder rock and tie it around your waist because as soon as you jump in the river and you start to drown, your, your instincts are going to kick in and you're going to swim to the surface. So he said, he's trying to help him kill himself. And he said, you know, what happened to the love? You used to love me. Now you're telling me to do this. See, he's walking toward her. He's, and the, the way he tells the story, you've heard this story. When he tells the story, he says that he started walking toward the river. And the teacher said, okay, no, no, wait, give me a minute. He said, okay, I'll give you one minute. He says to the teacher. And he said, sat down, touched him in the forehead nine hours later. We each have, this is Shaktipada. 
This is the real meaning. It doesn't have to be done in the physical presence of a great master. It's not just the beginning. Shakti comes along the way. Little doses of that come along the way. If we're sincere, grace comes. It comes in a form that we, we find pleasing. You may, you may have in your mind that Christ did it because an image came into your mind. Krishna may have done it. Swami Rama may have done it. I've had people tell me that I came inside them and I did this or that and the other. And I said, no, I didn't do it. They said, yes, you did. I said, no, maybe it was Swami Rama in drag. <laughs> you know. But it wasn't me. And I said, or, in fact, I do love you very much. And, and maybe it was a deep part of me that wanted this for you, and that I'm, but I'm not consciously aware of it. There is this magic, there is this mystery that goes on. I liken it to a gravitational pull in the Milky Way, just to keep it small. A hundred thousand light years across, and yet all these stars swirl about themselves because of gravity. You have me? A hundred thousand light years across, and yet it swirls. There's no place in this Milky Way that there's no gravity. Well, there's no place in this world or in you that there is not Shakti and God and truth and all. Everything you're looking for is right there at all times and all places. And the thing read, Bill read about my bio and introducing, my job is to teach people to show, find the teacher within. You know, and God take care of me, somebody, the day that I forget that. I'm in trouble. I finally came to a point. I ended up in Rishikesh. I ended up in India. I was walking down the river one day. I'm walking down the river. I'm wearing a from here all the way to the ground orange dress. And in my mind, I'm walking along. I said, well, you know, this is pretty good. I'm in my late 40s. My life has led me to the point where I'm walking down this river in this foreign country wearing a dress. <laughs> I said, this is kind of silly, actually. To take on funny clothes and, and things like that, it's a rite of passage. People take on new monot monastic names, whether you're doing that or you go join whatever order it is. Part of it is, when the first time somebody calls you Swami Janeshwar, they look around, who is that? You know, that's one of the things about name, because you figure out that it's not who you are. All this process goes on. My last job from my teacher was spend 100% of your time doing the practice. Sit in the ashram, do the practice. The last year he was in the body was the most incredible year I've ever been through in this, in this life. I got to a point I thought my mind was going to explode. Insights were coming so fast day after day. I mean, I was swimming in this. I had an insight one day. I was sitting in a meditation and said, you don't need to see the teacher anymore. It terrified me. I thought, what kind of ego is this? You know, that I'm saying I don't need teacher anymore. Two weeks later, I saw Swamiji. I was out at the hospital. I was doing something. He walked in the door. I was so grumpy. I so had it. And in my late 40s, at 30, I threw everything away. I'm broke. I don't have any money. I don't care about the money. You know. I ended up in India with eight dollars. That was my total net worth. I owned nothing other than the luggage I was there with. This is where life had brought me. But I was hungry. And that day he walked in the door like this. I was sitting at a desk, walked in the door here. I didn't even look out there. I was just so fed up with the whole thing. He said, How are you doing? I said, I'm stuck. I didn't even look at it. I'm stuck. And by stuck, I meant there's absolutely nothing more I can do. I'm just, I was just completely beat. And he said, what do you want? I could, out of my eyes, there was a little grin in his face. I said, I want the journey to be done. I didn't say I wanted lightened. Before, when he'd say, what do you want? I said, I want to wake up. I crossed path and he said, how are you doing today? And I said, I'm wallowing in ignorance because you won't wake me up. <laughs> Things like that. This time that wasn't there. I just wanted it over. Suicide wouldn't work. I wasn't suicidal. I just wanted the whole thing to stop. The whole thing. I said, what do you want? I said, I want the journey to be done. And he said, now you will be given piercing of the bindu. When we talk about seeing light at the end of a tunnel, we hear this, right? Every one of us have heard this story. 